My name is Hugh Cordy. I'm a series producer working for an independent wildlife film company called Wild Horizons Limited. I've been working in natural history about 17 years and for the most part at the BBC Natural History Unit in Bristol. Perhaps the biggest production I've worked on was Planet Earth and, and it's possibly the biggest production I'll, I'll ever work on because it was a, a massive undertaking by the BBC Natural History Unit and on that series I was a producer producing three of the episodes, caves, deserts and rainforests. As a producer you're involved in the day-to-day -day management of a program and for that program a team will typically include a producer, an assistant producer and a researcher and all those three jobs have different responsibilities of course. A researcher will literally do what it says on the tin. She, he or she will research projects, research ideas and feed those back to the assistant producer and producer who will decide on what, whether the sequence is right for the program or not. The producer and the, a and the assistant producer are more, tend to be more creative, tend to be the people that try to shape that story into a television sequence. But it really depends on what project you want. I know researchers that end up going on location and directing shoots. So it depends on, it depends on what sort of project it is. But if you're taking a blue chip landmark series like the ones I make, that's typically the way it works. If you take a series like Planet Earth and look at each individual sequence, you could probably divide it into two categories. Those that look special because of technology and those that just involved huge amounts of effort and energy and time trying to film natural behaviour. Uh, we were trying to film birds of paradise displaying in the New Guinea forests. Now that sequence took one cameraman 600 hours in a hide to film. And I think most people would find it difficult spending three or four hours in a hide, let alone 600. And we filmed about three or four species, but none of them were easy. My route into natural history wasn't exactly conventional. I'd always been fascinated by wildlife ever since I was a small boy, but I actually gave up science subjects at about 13 or 14 years old, largely because the teachers at my school that took science weren't particularly inspirational. So I found myself channeled into the art subjects. But having left university with a history and politics degree, I got a lucky break in a wildlife film company and, and I've never looked back. And I think, although I'm fairly unusual in this business, I think the important point to make is that if you really have the desire, the will, to get into this business, you can. And I pretty much say that to anybody who asks me for advice. It really is about being determined. This business is incredibly rewarding, I would say, because you do actually work on a project and end up with a finished product that millions of people see. The natural history programs that I've made or been part of have been watched maybe upwards of 100 million people. Now imagine what other forms of work you could do that had that sort of exposure. And it's not just being seen by lots of people, it's making a difference to some people. They'll watch these series and some people will be inspired into starting environmental projects, um, investing in environmental projects. You know, maybe leading more environmental lives. So in some ways you're also making a difference. I don't want to overstate it, but I think it's, it's to me, there's, there's, there's no question that it has an impact on, on a number of people. The advice I would give somebody starting off in my field is firstly, decide what you really want to do. This is television, first and foremost. If it's just wildlife you want to see, or if it's just travel you want to do, then don't do this job. You do have to enjoy television. And so watch as much television as you can. Any sort of television really, but obviously specifically natural history television, and find out what it is you like about those programs. Because this will help you when you actually get an interview or meet people. And once you decide what you want to do, it can be very, I mean at the, at the very start you can pretty much take anything and it would be a good idea. But very quickly you need to decide where you want to go. Do you want to go into research and the editorial side? Do you want to go into editing? Do you want to go into camera work? These are the decisions you pretty much want to make fairly early on in your career. The biggest piece of advice I can give anybody trying to get into this business is writing to as many people as possible and then following it up with a phone call. Because people that are in a position to give you a job get hundreds of requests a year. You know, I probably get two or three a week. And to stand out, you've got to be a little bit more determined than the other person. Now, that doesn't mean you should be stalking 
for said person, but it does mean showing some determination. And just writing an email or sending somebody your CV is not enough in this business.